Hey everyone, it's Blue Liz Jello, and welcome back to Blue Plays Scholar of the First Sin. We are in Harvest Valley at the very first bonfire, and I look a little bit different yet again, so let's take a look, see what I'm rocking today. I am using, at the request of one of our viewers, the Giant Stone Axe plus 5, you know who you are by the way, and you can see that I did, as I said, I upgraded all the way up to plus 5, which might really be overkill in this area, because you can see over on the right hand side, Base damage of 414, I'm getting 146 from scaling, so I am actually doing 560 damage with this thing two-handed. This might be pretty beastly. As for rings, pretty standard accoutrement, but I did change out my gauntlets for the Sanctum Knight gauntlets. I think they actually fit the bulk of the armor. Really goes well with the CNs. Now, obviously, it is kind of filthy, and I wish I could clean them up a little bit, but I don't really know anyone who cleans gauntlets in Dark Souls 2. As for stats, did level up just a bit here. I'm up to 109, so got some points into Vitality, some into Vigor. You know the drill. There we go. All right, Harvest Valley. This area is full of poison. You will see I don't have any poison moss on my hotbar. And you can see I do have 19, so I do have plenty, but I'm going to show you why I don't have any on my hotbar because a lot of you have been talking about in the comments how the poison has really been giving you some trouble and you're running out of poison moss. And I am here to tell you, thanks to my good friend Santi and some other people who decided to yell at me as well, poison moss is really not the way to go when you get poisoned. It is it is actually a bit wasteful and we're going to see that a lot in this episode, but I'll uh, talk about it more at length once I talk to Chloe. -Ann. I'm Chloe -Ann, an all stone trader. Well, you don't even have a stone, you have a I skull and you don't even trade that. Let's see what you have. So you want to exhaust her dialogue, but you can see right now she offers a bonfire ascetic, she offers titanite shards, and a couple of spells here. By the way, dead again, you can see I already have two. I got two of these from the parasitic worms down in Black Gulch when I did farming, without any item discovery gear. Unbelievable. But anyway, her inventory does change as the game goes on, as you defeat Iron Keep, as you get to Drang Lake Castle. She will actually begin selling... Uh, Titanite Shards Unlimited, she'll sell large Titanite Shards Unlimited, she'll sell Titanite Chunks, she sells a slab, Twinkling Titanite, she sells just about everything you could want, some of them in limited quantities, but make sure when you're here that you just rush through her dialogue or listen to it. But now, once she says it's time to move on, you can go ahead and leave. Now, the next time we rest at a bonfire, she'll disappear and she will be hanging out in Majula. By the way, if you don't catch on by listening to dialogue, that is actually Lenigrath's daughter. Sad. Also sad, this guy died while trying to listen to a secret that the wall had. Hmm, I wonder if he ever found out what it was. So here we go, we have a mounted overseer directly ahead in this pool of poison gas. Oh, these are new. Those enemies crawling around are, are definitely new. I'm not used to that. And there seems to be a lot more items down there. Holy moly. Oh, by the way, I'm also wearing the Hade Knight Iron Mask. Decided to change it up a bit. Oh, can't carry more life gems. Oh, look at that. I'm one-shotting skeletons. Didn't expect that. No, I really did. All right, so let's go ahead. Oh, geez, the track. Oh, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a problem. Hopefully, that's overhead. Oh, overhead? I'm from Minnesota again. Alright, so you can see I'm poisoned. What I'm going to do is, I'm just going to pop a life gem. Actually, I'm going to end up popping two. Because two, one will typically stop the halt. Two will actually increase your health. And, as you can see, the nice thing about popping life gems as opposed to using a poison moss is that the poison tick continues to go down and you can't get repoisoned again until now. So now it goes up and up and up. The poison will proc. One life gem. And then let it drain just a little bit because life gems do stop once you hit max health. And two life gems. And that should actually cover us for the remainder of this poison. If you use a poison moss on the other hand, and maybe I should actually just demonstrate that to make it easier. Once you use a poison moss, and actually I will use it here. Let me go ahead and let me get them on my hotbar. So I'm poisoned. If I use a poison moss, yes, it stops the poison immediately, but it also means that the poison itself can begin building up again immediately. And the problem with that is now I'm just going to be using another poison moss here, right now. 
and poison mosses can be bought from Gavlan in a limited quantity. They can be farmed elsewhere, but they're a lot harder to come by than life gems. So if you just pop a couple of life gems, then you, oh wow, that didn't kill him. Well, my point still stands. It still works. It's just uh, this skeleton had some other plans for me. So a lot more economical to just use life gems instead of using poison moss. That's my PSA for the day. I cannot come up with that, but my good friend Santi and some other viewers yelled at me enough until I finally caved and started using life gems instead. Lots and lots of loot down here now. And at only 300 souls apiece, life gems are, are very easy, and I can actually go pick that one up over there. Easy to come by. Titanite Chunk, great. And by the way, another viewer had asked me about the Poison Bite Ring. The Poison Bite Ring, in any any sort of poison defense, doesn't decrease the amount of damage that you actually take from poison. Instead, it actually just increases your poison resistance, so it takes longer for you to actually get poisoned. But once you get poisoned, you're still going to take the same amount of damage. You do know me! It's good to see you, buddy. What do we have? See, you can buy them, but they're 1,500 souls apiece. They are five times as expensive as Malentia sells life gems. So, keep that in mind. I am actually going to sell something here. I was told, yeah, look at this, 750 apiece. I apologize, I can't remember your name, but I was told that this is the only use he found, and I agree. I got almost 10,000 souls for selling those. Much appreciated. get a raw stone and then also in this room don't forget to hop down right here looks like there might be some skeletons spawning behind me I'm not sure also there is a trick to this gas fire seed and divine blessing it does get very difficult to see now that's a very small area so I'm not worried about it but in another section coming up where you do want to see where you're going if you light a torch you can actually see through the gas just a little bit better it's not it's still not great but it is better. Pop that poison, or pop the life gem, don't pop poison. Even if you have the option. They got rid of the mount, whoa! I was gonna say they got rid of the mounted overseers, but they actually replaced it with desert sorceresses. Uh, I think I prefer the, the overseers actually. They're a lot slower than these ones are. Got some hexing urns. Still only two, though, and as long as I can maybe bum rush the first one. Oh, right here. Oh, hey, you can almost get me. And no, even if I get the Desert Sorceress's top, that's such a. That's a lot of S's in that word. I'm not going to be wearing it on this character, just so you know. It just seems inappropriate. I don't know if this trick is still available, but a speedrunner technique was to actually jump right to the right of this rock. You could actually connect with the other side. There's kind of a, a weird collision, and you could run over this hill and get over to the next part of this stage pretty quickly. But I don't know if they've ever patched that, either in, either in this version or maybe a previous patch. Wow. Range is actually a little bit shorter than it appears. Either that or my depth perception is just that off. I'm guessing these are all filled with poison now, so don't just go rolling around all, all link-like through these pots. I'm going to rest just to restore our durability, because I did swap out the Bracing Knuckle Ring for the Royal Soldier's Ring, so I could roll a little bit faster. Oh, wow, crystal, oh my gosh, so many crystal lizards. I'm not going to be able to get them. Oh, hey, you even fall down, too. Oh, quick. How didn't that hit? There were three crystal lizards here. There was never a crystal lizard in this zone, so that's new. That's new. That is the way forward over by that overseer. We can hop down, but first, before we do that, we're going to do a couple things. We are, we're going to go both straight, and we're going to go this way, but first we're going to go to the right. Bit of a gauntlet here with these artificial undead. Oh, 
one dead. Let's see how much you like a jumping R2. Oh, you didn't hate it. Oh, I fell. Didn't mean to fall, but that's all right. Only down to two anyway. What's the follow-up? I don't know, because I can't actually get to it. Come on, would you just fall down? I'm right here. I don't care if you want to Goomba me. All right, well, we'll just, we're just gonna start looting while he's wasting his time. You finally, yep. Yeah. All right, now we can see what the follow-up looks like. Oh, it's just another overhead. Eh, useful, good for corridors. Got our simpleton spice. I just used a life gem. Sometimes I use the claw grip, which means that my pointer finger actually controls my camera. And sometimes that makes me end up hitting the wrong button. I like using a life gem just now. Now in this, so this is a path. And over here is another item. And there used to be a crystal lizard out here that was really, really difficult to get. What does the running R1 look like? Oh, it is a smash. Good. I might be able to get him there if he's still here. I also have this doofus to deal with. Doesn't look like this crystal lizard's still here. Unless he already took off. But there used to be one that would just run towards his pit. Hmm. I don't think he's still there. Petrified something. That used to be a fragrant branch of yore. So now we are going to go straight here. There's a mounted overseer that you can see through that door and there's a little bit of a trick to him. He can punch through these doors, we cannot. And there's also a door over here that is similar. Where are you going? I just ran right past you. Come on. The trick is you need to stay close to him so he doesn't just keep spamming that attack because that will apparently break the door. I think that's new. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think his projectile ever broke the door before. Old Knight Pike, the Old Knight Great Shield, I think you actually had to have him physically connect with it. So that's interesting. I, I could be wrong. Maybe I just was that unlucky before. <laughs> I love that the guy just falls off. Smooth and silky stones. You can farm those from these enemies, which is pretty cool. Good for trading with the crows. And this poison section down here connects to the holes in that room that we saw over there where some of the lizards dropped down. So we are going to... Oh, you know what? I'm going to actually get flame butterflies equipped because I do want to show you the torch technique. How many butterflies do I have left? Five. Okay, we're good. We are good. So you can see it's, it's pretty difficult to navigate. And this doesn't act, absolutely fix it, but you can see... Makes it just a little easier for you. Oh, hey, skeleton. I would I would very much like to know why poise is just so utterly underappreciated. Or undervalued, or underleveled. I don't know what the... Under something. It, it doesn't work as well as it did in Dark Souls 1. Hopping up here. So you can see where we're at. Again, in the section where the crystal lizards were. And we can hop now down in this one for a little bit more loot. Fading soul worth a whopping 50 souls. You're welcome. Do not miss that. And then... Simpleton Spice, a little bit better. And now we can actually get out of it. We can get... Whoa, hey! Where's that desert sorceress? Where is she? Where? I don't... Whoa. I didn't actually realize my health was so low. In fact, you know what? Let's, let's go ahead and chug an Estus. I don't usually chug Estus. And I got a question about that recently. I, I don't know. I'm very weird about Estus flasks. I tend to use life gems a lot. Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Didn't want to be down here just yet. We'll be exploring that area once we've actually killed these undead steel workers. Where? Where is that blasted sorceress? 
I don't know why. I probably looked right at her three times and you guys are screaming. Anyway, let's go over here and find the sunlight altar. No, no artificial undead here. wonder if he's actually in here now. Nope, just free and clear. So you're free to join the Warriors of Sunlight here. Even if you don't, though, you have to praise the sun. I mean, you, you have to. And why not? We'll join it. We get the Sun Seal. Alright. Why is the altar here? I don't know. We've already been told time and time again that Drang Lake is not the same land as Lordron was. I can't explain why the exact copy-pasted altar is here. I really... I, I just... I can't. I'm sorry. But we need to find out where is this sorceress? Are you up there really lobbing firebombs? Okay. Oh, there's a shadow person right here. Or a rogue, I guess. Not a shadow person. Alright. Just one steel worker instead of two. That's fine. He can poison himself if he wants to. He can leave his friends behind. Okay, doing this just a little bit out of order. We're now in Earthen Peak. Okay, we have a rogue here. Who... Oh! Oh! Poisoned and there's a sorceress in there. Okay. Time to heal. Are you going to run right through here like an idiot? No. Get wrecked. In fact, you know what? I'm not going to go that way yet, because we're going to be in there in a moment anyway. So instead, let's clear this section so we can go in there once everything is complete. Now, there's still there's still an undead steelworker who might have died because he actually dropped down in the poison, and they are susceptible to it. Can I get a good plunging on you? That would be fun. The answer was uh, was no in this case. Alright, this is going to be kind of dangerous, but if we can just get three hits quickly, good, you're dead. Avoid this dark attack. Use a life gem to stave off the poison. One more to... One more to counteract, and now... Two... Three. Excellent. Now we loot. I, st I still don't know where that is. Oh, Chameleon, Soul of a Brave Warrior... The washing pole? What? Okay. So, the the largest katana in the game, and a slab, holy cow. The largest katana in the game is now in Harvest Valley in a poison in a poison cloud. Alright, I'm, I'm going to find that sorceress, and I'm going to make her rue the day. Rue it, mind you. And that is all the loot out here. So now... Where is that coming from? Is it really all the way up there? Or is it behind me? I can't even really look that high. I think it's coming from all the way up. It is. It is. It's coming from that ledge up there. Well, that just doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right at all. All right, undead steel worker, get poisoned. You're a goofy goober. And then, where's the sorceress? She was in the next room. Do not roll through these. You've seen what happens to them. Do not meet their same fate. Oh! All right, let's get this guy's attention and then run back in here. Let him, let him be a goober. Why? Why do you do this? You make horrible life decisions. You truly do. Now we're going to rush so we can get out of the range of her. Good. We got some poison horn beetles that we will avoid for now. We want to rush her. <laughs> and by that, I mean fall down this hill. Hole? Hill? Anyway, skeptic spice. Anyway, I'm not mad. Now we'll avoid it, and... She will wreck me! Get up quickly! No, no, no! I... I should have healed. That's... You know what? I'm gonna chalk that up to my fault. I'll see you guys in a second. 
Oh, hey. Okay. I'm invaded by the Forlorn. And apparently this is actually, you know what, the third time that I've been invaded. Not the second as I previously thought because I was invaded once off camera when I was farming in Black Ults. This was silly that I just decided to come in here and fight him with the rogue and all. Although, I don't want to fight him with the desert sorcerers taking pot shots at me either. But let's deal with this rogue. I meant to do a dumping attack there. Oh, good stun. And another. Oh, forlorn, you poor thing. You, wow, look at that crit. Don't get backstabbed. Don't, <laughs> don't hit the wall. There we go, finish. So this is actually the third time that I've now killed the forlorn, which means I can buy three pieces of his armor, and I am two away from actually being able to buy his weapons. Which is pretty cool. I've heard the greatsword is actually pretty fun to use, so we will, I think we'll do that. I think we'll do that once we get invaded two more times. So the forlorn, by the way, completely random. You do not have to be playing online, as I am not online. And it can happen in a number of different areas, and anytime you rest at a bonfire, anytime you die, there is a chance that he will spawn. Alright, now, can you... Yeah, that's what I was looking for. You brat, you're so fast! Well, at least you're dead. At least you're dead. Before we go, there's kind of a secret area off to the side. This guy might be a little bit of a trap for you. If you actually attack him head on, you might hit those pots, and they are full of poison, so... If you feel the need to kill him, do it from the side. It's my word of warning. And poison horn beetles. I don't see an undead steel worker. Oh, but there's a rogue. And there's this guy crawling on the ground. This isn't the Prowling Magus, so I don't know... I don't know what you think you're doing. Kind of in a weird place, my friend. Oh, I got the Mannequin Shield. And the Blossom. The Mannequin, I've been calling them rogues, but they are mannequins. And how about you? You a Mimic? No. I've said that I'm going to be more careful with... Uh, oh! Oh, with traps and, and Mimics, but... Uh, well, I tested for... <laughs> I tested for a Mimic, at least. So there's that. You die. Now this section right here, you don't want, uh, do you want to run? I think you just want to sprint towards it and then do a plunging attack, similarly to how I handled the ledge in Huntsman's Cops. I may die, I'm not sure. All right, let's give it a go. There we go, yep. If you do the plunging, you're not gonna fall off. You're not gonna roll off. Now there should be another mannequin. Oh. We have an artificial undead. Well, then let's just do this. There we go. So we had a man mannequin off to the right, but we had the artificial undead that we just used the arrow trap on. Simple as that. Any more mannequins hiding? None there. And there is one here. All right, die. And now we got the mannequin gloves. Cool. Anything? Nope. No mimic. The heavy crossbow, some heavy bolts, so that's the same treasure. Ooh, three more shards, cool. Got a lot of upgrade materials. By the way, on my run back to my souls after I died, I did manage to kill two of the crystal lizards, so I got some of their drops. One is still getting away from me. Now, this is very deceptive, and sadly, you really don't have an indication of where and where you cannot walk, other than the fact that those stairs lead directly down, and if you follow the stairs, there's a path there. But if you drop directly here or anywhere in that anywhere else in this room, you're gonna die. So instead, we are going to jump to the stairs. And now, oh, hey, we're gonna get poisoned. We're not worried about that. And ironically enough, at the end of this poison trail, you get, wait, repair powder. Shouldn't that be the poison bite ring or is that in this next room? <laughs> we have a ferris lock stone. Luca! Hey! Wow, I'm glad I explored this area. Luca's actually usually after the Covetous Demon by the bonfire. 
Now we have used her three times in fights and she has survived, which means we've actually completed her quest as far as summoning her goes. Now all we need to do is find her everywhere and exhaust all of her dialogue and then we're going to actually complete her quest once we get to Aldia's Keep. What is this curse? Oh, she starts to sound so despondent. She's so sad. She's the only NPC that I really connect with in Dark Souls 2. Came here looking for her brother, and now she's losing all identity. She's losing her own memory, and she still has no idea where her brother is. We're going to find out where her brother is later on. <sighs> this insignificant thing called self. Oh, man. There we go. Wow. She, again, she's the only one that I, I truly feel a connection with, and it pains me. It pains me to see what happens to her. Not a mimic. Okay, there it is. Poison Bite Ring and Soul of a Proud Knight. Yeah, so after, after you experience almost all the poison in this area, and most of it in the game, to be uh, honest... You can, uh, you can then get... Oh, you can't get to that ladder without being poisoned. But you know what? I'm already just about poisoned, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, once you're done with almost all the poison in the game, then you start getting poison bite rings. Granted, if you come here before you get to the Crown of the Sunken King areas like Shulva or Dragon Sanctum, it's not a, not a bad idea. So this next fight is maybe... The second most trivial fight in the whole game, the Prowling Magus being the other. But I'm going to show you a trick to make it even easier. And that is equip a bow. Let's see. Longbow. I can use a longbow. And you want iron arrows should do the trick. So we are going to start the fight by rushing in here. This is the Covetous Demon. This is Jabba the Hutt. And up here, you have these pots, and if you shoot the pots with a heavy enough arrow or bolt, it'll drop hollows. And why this actually makes this fight easier is because he actually stops to eat them. And you are free to do massive damage to him. And he, yeah, he takes a long time to recover. And actually, if you just let him go, he will just keep munging. Manja manja. Alright, he does have some super armor, apparently, when he starts to eat. So, just wait for him to get out of that animation. Hey, where are you going? We're done here. We're done here. No one needs to see you eat a third. Gluttonous pig. There, I spared you from being eaten and then killed you swiftly. That's a covetous demon. Even with an unupgraded weapon or a weapon that doesn't do as much damage, he is really pretty trifling. Trifling? Is that the right word? Trifling? Does that mean, like, not much of... I don't know. You know, he's just not very troublesome. Let's put it that way. Just stay to his side and you should be fine. But anyway, that was Harvest Valley. We're going to be moving into the Earthen Peak next, but that is going to be the next episode. So thank you guys so much for watching. This is not a spoiler-free walkthrough, so if there's anything you don't want me to miss or anything you want me to see, make sure you leave me that comment below. Everyone, I will see you next time.